or we are just about going live. I can confirm you are now live. Great. Um, we don't see the recording uh, icon or button. That's the one I was missing. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Paul Russell. I represent Lower Sackville at Halifax Regional Council. I'd like to uh, welcome everybody to the Special Events Advisory Committee for Thursday, March 9th, 2022. It is currently 3.03 p.m. and I'd like to call this meeting to order. I'd also like to acknowledge that the Halifax Regional Municipality is located in Mi'kma'ki, uh, the traditional and unceded lands of the uh, Mi'kmaq people. The municipality acknowledges the peace and friendship treaty signed in this treaty signed in this territory and recognizes that we are all treaty people. And as is standard with these virtual meetings, I'd like to run around uh, the room and just uh, make sure that everybody's audio and video are working. Uh, so let's start with uh, Councillor Mancini. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Chair and everyone. I hope the next time we have this meeting, it's in person and it's nice to talk about events. That'd be amazing. And, and events that will happen instead of that will be postponed. That's right. Hopefully so. Yep. Uh, good afternoon, Councillor Morse. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Nice to see you again, and nice to see everyone uh, on the call. Happy to be joining you from Clayton Park this afternoon. Oh, good stuff. Thank you. And Tim Rosesco, good afternoon. Good afternoon here in downtown Dartmouth. Good stuff. And Mark Shea, good afternoon. Good afternoon uh, from the Sutton Place Hotel in downtown Halifax, and uh, representing the uh, Hotel Association. Oh, good stuff, thank you. And Ross Jefferson has sent his regrets. Allison Gillian, good afternoon. Hello, it's Allison Gillian from Halifax Partnership from our sorry. offices here in the Nova Center. I keep adding an extra I, I'm sorry about that. No uh, worry. Gordon Stewart, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Gordon Stewart, uh, representing the Restaurant Association of Nova Scotia. Good stuff, thank you. And Todd Brayman in the FBI surveillance van. Good afternoon. <laughs> Not quite. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, Todd Brayman uh, piping in from the Old Red Store in Historic Properties representing Develop Nova Scotia. There you go. Thank you. Uh, far better than the FBI surveillance van. Uh, Hi, sir. And uh, moving through staff, we have Elizabeth Taylor with us. Hello. Good afternoon, committee and Mr. Chair, Elizabeth Taylor, Manager, Culture and Events. Hello, and uh, Sherry Dillman. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and committee members, Sherry Dillman, Culture and Events. Good stuff, thank you. And we have Jill McGillicuddy with us from the clerk's office. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so at this point, I'd like to move ahead and approve uh, or seek approval of the minutes of November 3rd, 2021. Can I have a motion to approve those minutes, please? Gordon Stewart, are you Second. moving those minutes? Yes, sir. Good stuff, thank you. And Councillor Morse, was that you seconding it? Yes, thank you. Beautiful, thank you. Are there any errors or, uh, so the motion on the floor, Gordon, if you wouldn't mind reading it, if you have the Zoom chat open, uh, it has been pasted there that the Special Events uh, Advisory Committee approved the 2022 meeting schedule as presented. Thank you very much, Gordon. So that motion is on the floor. Are there any errors or omissions? Just one quick question. I, I saw the dates there for the schedule. Uh, no, that was, yes, uh, you're right. Yeah, you're talking minutes, aren't you? We are talking minutes. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mancini. Um, I'm sorry, Gordon, that was a, a different motion uh, that the, the correct motion has now been pasted into the chat. If you wouldn't mind me reading the second motion. That the minutes of the November 3rd, 2021 be approved as circulated. Thank you. And again, thank you, Councillor Mancini for that. So hearing no errors or omissions for those minutes, uh, all in favor of the minutes of November 3rd, 2021, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those say nay. Great, those minutes pass. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda uh, and the order of business. And over to the clerk's office, do we have any changes this afternoon? 
There are no changes from the municipal clerk's office. Great, thank you very much, Jill. Uh, can I have a motion to approve the order of business as presented, please? Um, so moved. Thank you, Councillor Mancini. Do we have a seconder? I'd be Seconded. happy to second. Uh, thank you very much, Todd, for seconding that. Uh, does council have any requests for changes? Seeing none, all in favor of the order of business as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Great, thank you very much. Uh, we don't have any business, or are th is there any business arising out of the minutes? I don't see any. Are there any, uh, um, this is a call for declaration of conflicts of interest. And I don't see any of that either. And so we have no consideration of deferred business. Uh, correspondence, do we have any correspondence, Madam Chair, or Madam Clerk? If there were no uh, correspondence received from the Municipal Clerk's Office. Okay, thank you. And do we have any petitions? There were no petitions received by the Clerk's Office. Okay, thank you very much. So the next item on the order of business is a presentation from the East Coast Music Association. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll be receiving uh, this presentation and it's focused on the 2023 East Coast Music Awards. And so the speakers are Andre Gracie uh, and Andy McLean. And, uh, I see Andy, I see Andre. Uh, we have the screen up, go ahead. Hello, Andy, I'm going to let you kick things off. I'm Andre Gracie, really wonderful to be here. Know most people on the on the line and uh, we're excited. So I'll let, uh, hi everybody, uh, I'll let uh, over to you, Andy, our CEO. Thank you, Andre, and thank you every, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, we are absolutely thrilled to be able to present to the, uh, to the committee for support for the 35th anniversary of the ECMAs, which are returning to Halifax, May 3 to 7, 2023, back where it all began um, back in 1989. So um, I know we only have a few minutes. We're hoping to um, get through the presentation in 10 minutes, if that's okay. Um, but uh, we have, uh, we've, we're very excited to be going back to real events with uh, real music and real performance. So there's been a huge turnaround. Um, as host city, obviously Halifax will feature prominently in all the 2023 assets that begin uh, that campaign in Fredericton, which is our host city for this show, 2022, uh, where we do the handover between the mayor of Fredericton um, and obviously the mayor of, uh, of HRM, uh, Mike, Mike Savage, which is taking place on the red carpet, May the uh, 5th in, in Fredericton. Um, just a couple of general comments before we get into the slide presentation, but I just wanted to say that these past couple of years of COVID restrictions, musicians in the music industry, as we know, have suffered uh, greatly. We now feel, feel strongly that we're starting to start down the road to recovery. Um, our in-person event is um, being strongly supported in Fredericton. We've seen a, a huge uptick uh, in uh, confirmations for people attending in person in Fredericton. And so I think the appetite by 2023 will be incredibly strong and we anticipate uh, a strong desire for people to travel and to get back to immerse themselves in the East Coast culture. So um, I will um, just remind you, we were here in 2018, the ECMAs do rotate through Atlantic Canada. So it's been five years since we were here for the 30th anniversary. And if any of you remember, that was uh, quite a spectacular event indeed. So um, is somebody moving the slide presentation? If we can just go to um, the second slide, who we, uh, who we are, I think I've just covered that. And if we could go to the third. Um, that is the ECMA in general. Like I say, we are a not-for-profit association since 1989, and we deliver not just this five-day event of the East Coast um, Music Association that it's renowned for, but also year-round programs to all our members, including a mental health and wellness program, online content, radio ECMA podcast, and other international partnerships that showcase East Coast talent around the, the world. And during COVID, we've obviously invested significantly in, in hybrid technology as well and continued the last two, two years um, as, um, as an online and virtual event. Um, next slide, please. 
so the East Coast Music Awards and Festival um, is a five day uh, and night event. Uh, there are four pillars to the event. There's the award show. There are two shows, a Thursday show and a Sunday show. There's a festival, which is a public facing event, which you will know in terms of multiple venues. There's an export buyers program where the business is done and the conference where the networking and teaching is done. If we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, I'll go straight to in terms of what we bring as the host city, the return on the investment is significant. Next slide, please. The economic impact to um, HRM based on the STEAM report, which you did was uh, between four and six million uh, in 2018. And we're anticipating matching or uh, increasing that for 2023. Next slide, please. That is the details of the STEAM report that was generated in 2018, which goes through um, the, um, the amount of uh, total province uh, of export um, impact that was generated, as well as that within uh, Halifax and HRM itself. So I don't need to go through those details. You can, you can see them. If we go to the next slide. So we'll go to our projections for 2022 and 23. I just want to give you 2022 as a an idea of where we're headed in the 23. So the next slide, please. We are in New Brunswick this year, May 4th to 8th. It is our first in-person meeting for two years for ECMA and the advance ticket sales and response are, are absolutely huge. It's, it's certainly turned around significantly in the last four to, to five weeks. So um, this is kind of the scope of the event, 55 events, 12 venues, 14,000 attendees, 450 performing artists, which would translate to about 150 bands, a big international as well as national presence, um, the use of volunteers. Um, and also we will be um, uh, working closely with uh, our new broadcast partner, which is Rogers, who will be on board for 2023 as well. So let's just go to the next slide, which I'm sure you're all keen to focus on. This is Halifax 2023. We're looking at bringing in a total of about 60 events over five days, um, engaging with 14 venues uh, in the downtown uh, and ac across in Dartmouth as well. Um, approximately 18,000 people coming in. A, a substantial amount of that would be non-residents. Our East Coast artists, about 500 performing artists, which would translate to 200 bands. Um, music industry delegates coming again from all across Canada, the US and around the world. A significant use of volunteers as well for community engagement and our host hotel, which is the Halifax Marriott Harbour Front. Um, the total room nights at the moment are, are 2750 is what we're looking at. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Our uh, key objectives obviously are to celebrate the 35th anniversary of the ECMAs to grow national, regional, and international audiences that can come and see what happens in Nova Scotia and within Halifax, um, and to provide infrastructure um, as we leave, as we engage with the community with various mentorship programs and training programs, um, the new business opportunities that are generated. The diversity of our program continues to expand. Um, in terms of the genres that we represent and also the increased engagement with the more marginalized communities, the African Canadian community, the indigenous community and the Francophone members. That is something ECMA has been working on for the last two years and will continue to do so. Um, next, uh, next slide, please. Um, this is just an example of our live audience reach the, when we were in 2019. Gives you a sense of just what the impact we, we have. And the next slide, please, is the uh, digital audience. We become very adept in the last two years of reaching um, online. Uh, and so we produced uh, two major online shows, not just the award show, but also showcasing. And all of this content is generated online um, and by our in-house production team as well. And, and this is, we're gonna continue with some of this hybrid approach. It's, uh, it's clearly, it works, it expands our reach for those people that just can't make it to the event. It certainly is a fantastic way of showcasing uh, what's going on in the region and the whole city where we are. So these are new skills that we've developed and honed over the last two years. And um, our in-house production team, I think is uh, some of the best in terms of capturing 
what East Coast music looks and sounds like, and we will be continuing to deliver that in parallel to the good old fashioned putting uh, live music in front of live fans. Um, the next slide, please. These are our demographics, just for you to take a look at. Um, I'm not gonna go into the detail here. If there are any questions, we can come back to it, but it's, uh, it uh, skews you know, 24 to 44, a little bit uh, higher female. Um, next one, please. And um, so now I'm just gonna talk quickly about the four pillars and Andre, you can help me out here when we get yeah. to um, the red carpet and the award show. The next slide. The uh, award show, we actually have two shows, but then um, the, the biggest one that probably you remember from 2018 at the uh, Scotia um, Bank Center was uh, the 30th anniversary. It is uh, where we give out, uh, it's an arena sized show. There'll probably be 5,000 people in attendance in Halifax. Um, we give out uh, 12 awards and there's a special induction to the Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame. And it is the time when the, the tables are laid out. It looks beautiful for the cameras. It's a chance to, for the whole industry to really shine. And we have uh, an incredible uh, red carpet as well, which uh, I know maybe Andre, you could just give us a few highlights of what that looks like. For sure. I guess one of the, the big things with this too is uh, the national sponsorship with Rogers that we're, we look uh, right now at taking it into Halifax. They've just come on this year in Fredericton and uh, they've got big plans. We already are getting some national exposure on City TV and, and breakfast television uh, in Toronto. Um, so they wanna take this uh, to another level, um, obviously maybe starting something up in Rogers Square, which makes a lot of sense, bringing us over to the Scotiabank Center. Our uh, red carpet is um, a little different than the Junos or the uh, MMBAs and the fact that we have a really interactive, if you were there the last time it was, a crazy red carpet with probably about 50 interactive activations and uh, sponsors showcasing their products and just setting the tone for a really great festive time in Halifax. Uh, and then we go over to the, as Andy if, said. If I, if I can yeah. interrupt for sure. just a minute, you have one minute left. Okay. Well then Andy, okay, I'll, we'll I'll, I'll let you carry on. We'll crack on. Okay. Next slide, please. Um, and the festival, that's the, that's the public facing one um, where obviously music fans get to go to as many clubs around Halifax and Dartmouth as possible. Next slide, please. We'll keep going. Um, these are just some of the things that we'll be uh, showcasing. Um, if we can just keep going then with one minute to go, we do, this is the business side of it. This is how many delegates come in and uh, how much business we generate. Next slide. Um, in terms of what we will be doing, working closely with the community, developing a local engagement committee and all the things that we uh, create and, and also remain afterwards as a legacy. And let's get to the important uh, slide. Community engagement um, is, uh, is, is there too, working with, again, our Indigenous community and Francophone, African Canadian community. And one more slide, please. How we will evaluate it, obviously the number of people attending and... Um, the audience that we will be generating and the export buyers revenue and obviously how the impact uh, it, it has on the HRM and, uh, and uh, the whole region. And finally, one more, financial support. We are asking for a contribution of 300,000, uh, which would match the provincial support and our federal contribution is 250. We have an operating budget of just over 1.6. And um, for that contribution, obviously, a uh, municipality would be considered a high level partner and we, we would offer full benefits and entitlements package to go to that. Um, and thank you. The last slide is thank you very much for allowing us to present. Uh, a little bit rushed towards the end, but hopefully we can take some questions or uh, help in any way to uh, help you make a decision. I believe Tony uh, has. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and yeah. if, if I may. Um, so I would ask anybody in the committee, if you are interested in asking a question, please indicate that in the chat and then, uh, and then we'll just uh, move through. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Mancini. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. There, there is no motion on the floor today that we're not dealing with that, uh, the ask of 300K today, is that correct? There is no motion in reference to this presentation, but if you would like to uh, craft and, and uh, make a motion, then that option is available. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, we have a report coming on April 19th, and okay. the um, 
event is included in the recommendations for funding for that report. So a motion is not required at this time. Beautiful, thank you very much, Elizabeth. So Mr. Chair, I do have some questions if I may. Uh, uh, so uh, Andy, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Andre, it's always good to see you. Uh, I hope you're well. Nice to see you. <laughs> I dug out of my, my closet, my 2007. <laughs> It looks uh, good. Organizing committee, uh, oh. her, I chaired the uh, sponsorship committee. Uh, I remember. Was here. And, you, you know, uh, I think, Andy, you mentioned uh, it's been tough on musicians and it's been tough on restaurants. It's been tough on hotels. Uh, it's been tough on our pubs. It's been tough on our people. Uh, and having an event like this, I wish it was this year that we were doing it, but uh, uh, because we need it, right? We need it for the businesses. We need it for the community. We need it for our mental health and uh, music and the land of Canada and the Maritimes. Uh, it's all connected. So I'm a big fan uh, of this event. Uh, really glad to see that Rogers is back in. I mean, I do remember the days of the award show being broadcasted across the country. And, and you know, and it was such a, a coup for the cities that were hosting it to be able to say, you know, here live from Halifax. Uh, so I'm glad that that's uh, I'm interested to see what Rogers is actually going to do. Uh, Andy, you uh, alluded to uh, the diversity and really glad to see that in the diversity of the uh, uh, the artists. So I have a few questions. I'll just read the questions off and then you guys can answer them. Uh, the, um, you know, are we doing anything with regard to the audience and uh, attracting uh, our many, many newcomers to our municipality? Uh, and maybe getting involved with ice hands or something of that sort. And, you know, look, we're going to have a lot more uh, newcomers. Uh, we know what's going on around the world and there'll be many new people. So uh, it'd be nice to see if we can do anything to attract those uh, from an audience point of view. If you could share with a little bit of what Rogers is going to do. Um, the 35th anniversary, the red carpet, Andre, you know, are we, are, are there any plans for some special artists to come back and some artists that probably have made it so big that they don't show up here anymore? I mean, we've got some amazing talent that's come out of the Maritimes that are really huge global artists. Is there any plans that bringing them back and they would have been on those stages many many years ago um and you talked about the dark with clubs andy i know that tim and i are interested in hearing about that you know uh how many of those clubs are you know we have many great pubs and or, or yeah other places too uh, where we could have some talents uh songwriter circles whatever um and that was i think my question and the you know happy to see that report with elizabeth when it comes back so once again excited to hear about it so those are my questions yeah, I just wanted to say about the Rogers, uh, Andy and I are very excited about the Rogers deal that has come through this year, and, and they are looking to be a long-term partner, and it is going to bring the ECMAs uh, back coast to coast to coast. Uh, we're looking at Rogers TV, where they just acquired Shaw, so... Um, and Seaside in Cape Breton. Um, so there is gonna be so much more exposure for the uh, the city, the region, and for our artists in that relationship. Uh, as well, as I mentioned, they also have Omni, which is their multicultural station. Shaw has a multicultural station, which will be featuring our artists. Um, they want us to be uh, profiled on City TV. And so there's lots going to be lots of exposure in the GTA. Great. Uh, again, so this is like great for the city, great for our artists. And so we're really, really, and they are very engaged. Um, mm -hmm. So um, that's that's really good from that perspective. Andy, maybe you want to speak to that? I just saw one that wanted to say there are no firewalls to accessing. You don't have to be a Rogers customer to, to get this either. It, it's completely open. We're also streaming to our platforms. We've been very successful in building that. So this has been a wonderful partnership with Rogers where it's non-exclusive. They're actually taking our content that we're creating internally because I think we best represent the musicians and they're taking that and then pushing it out through all of their other platforms. So in a way, it's the perfect deal to, uh, to reach as many people, not just nationally, but around the world, anywhere uh, you, you can watch the UCMAs online these days now. So we're very excited wow. about that. And, and you asked about some of the legacy acts. Well, certainly we do have this uh, partnership with the Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame. And uh, we will be, so we, we uh, they inducted uh, Rita McNeil actually uh, last year in, in Sydney. It was part of the, obviously the virtual show um but there will be a significant um a significant artist that will come in for the, the 35th anniversary i can't really say who it is going to be right now um in 2018 sloan did actually come back and perform if you remember that they got the director's, director's special yeah. achievement award and yeah. uh, but it was a it was a stellar night and we will pull out all the stops in terms of the artists mm -hmm. for that particular show 
It sounds exciting. And the diversity question? Newcomers? Yeah, well, so we, uh, going on two years ago, we started making changes at the board level, introducing three subcommittees uh, for from African Canadians, for the Indigenous community, and for the Francophone community, establishing, actually appointing uh, chairs from that community to be on the subcommittee and then to start the outreach because we are a submission based organization so you need to kind of apply and and we've been doing outreach outreach and more outreach uh, through the community through the co-chairs and i'm so excited this year that we are able to um, have the largest number of uh, more diverse communities represented not just in the showcasing artists but also at the core of the business that we create, which is our export program. And so those, there are 40 acts that are part of the export program where we bring in curated uh, buyers. They come in, they watch the artists during uh, closed daytime sessions and they do the business and they generate a significant amount of business for that. And so there is more representation and more diversity, more inclusion than we've ever had before. And also right up to the board level, you'll see that we, we also have a vice, a, a VP, Delvina Bernard is our, is our vice, VP of, um, of EDI. Uh, Andy, Andy, sorry. Sorry. No, sorry, I just noticed that Gordon had a question after uh, on, on export uh, ready artists, Andy, but uh, sorry, Tony, finish up with your- and The last question I had was with regard to venues in Dartmouth, on the Dartmouth side what venues we're looking at. Well, well, I can speak to that a little bit, Andy. Um, we have a, a partnership with um, New Scotland um, and uh, they provide our, our merch, our volunteer t-shirts. And uh, Scott has been really um, uh, excited about this uh, coming uh, to Halifax next year. So we're, he wants to program, um, they, they're actually building, I think you probably know that, a, a space in their venue. Um, but we will certainly have Dartmouth representation on our LEC and take advisement on that, uh, Andy? Yeah, the, the LEC, the Local Engagement Committee, and the structure we have for ECMA now is we do, we, we, we pull together some key stakeholders in the host city and it worked so great in 2018. Um, and the, the, I think the co-chairs were Matt Hebb and, and Candice Thomas, who did a fantastic job. Um, and so in terms of uh, making sure we get the right connections and that we can make the right int introductions and get everything uh, correct in terms of what we want to do, those people, I think, will start to advise us in terms of which venues we should be looking at. And it's really not too, too early to start scouting um, mm. all of those venues. Clearly, they've had a, a really rough time and they're just starting to come back uh, online with, with, uh, with COVID. But um, that'll be part of our, um, of our process as we start to, to build out on, on 2023. Uh, I can just put it, I know my time's up, but uh, you know, a word in a consideration for obviously our various pubs in Dartmouth, but the Aldery Landing. Uh, and so it'll be great to see a songwriter circle or something in that event. I mean, there's not only the theater aspect of the building, other parts of the building too. So anyhow, thank you all. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, truly excited uh, for this. Uh, fantastic. Thank you, Tony. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Mancini. Uh, Gordon, you had a question? Just following up on the one that's export ready, just can you talk a little bit about an export ready entertainer? What, what does that look like from our point of view? From your point of view, it means they're already touring nationally and they've already probably even done um, one tour outside of the, um, of the country. But um, these are artists that are on their way up to the level where, you know, in a musician's career, there are certain kind of crossroads where opportunity knocks, basically. And that's what happens at ECMA. So it's making sure that when we bring in, say, a buyer from a big festival in Denmark, they come in. The artists that they're seeing are at the le level in their career where if she wants to book them for that festival and book them sub subsequently after that, um, they are ready to take advantage of that. So the artists that traditionally have, you know, more support in terms of the back end as well, with a with a manager or an agent or a publisher, where the infrastructure is, is there on the on their business side. Um, and if they don't have that, we certainly try and provide much of that too. But it's really kind of those level artists that are showing that they've they've got themselves to, the, to this particular level here, and and how to take it to the next one with uh, with the new opportunities that we're creating on site during the ECMAs. Great, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Merck. You had a question? Yeah, I'm just curious. I, I noticed during the presentation that a, a host hotel was already selected. I'm curious to know if there's opportunities for, for other properties 
and also a little curious to hear a little bit more about Rogers Square and what the plan is there. That sounds uh, quite interesting. Um, certainly, I can talk to the hotel. Maybe Andre can can do Rogers Square. But um, we um, we have a relationship with the with the Marriott. We obviously uh, they were the host hotel back in 2018. It doesn't mean they're the only hotel. It just means that um, much of the the daytime. Kind of registration or central areas where, where people come will take place there but um, the number of people that will be coming in there will obviously be, will be having room blocks at a significant number of other hotels that uh, we'll be working on. It's so similar to the Fredericton situation now we have the Delta, we have the Crown Plaza, we have the Hilton Garden Inn, um, those are the kind of the three downtown hotels so we'll be expanding into more relationships and, and, and taking blocks at, uh, at other, other hotels as we have in previous years. Yeah, and a lot of times, Mark, they'll look for, you know, artists will also look uh, for, um, you know, less expensive accommodations, those that, you know, are coming um, as a delegate or, you know, maybe a no case artist or whatever. So they're, they're coming um, and they maybe want to look for other options area, you know, um, motels in the area or maybe in the Dartmouth side. Um, so there, it, it does spread out for sure beyond our host hotels. And how do they sign up for that? And this may be a silly question. I'm just curious, is it a proposal that would be sent out? Is, just so I can share with the, the committee, I guess, if that's okay. So I think for our delegates, we, um, Andy, you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, our operations team, um, we negotiate with those downtown uh, properties that we will accommodate our delegate base, our expert buyers, our sponsors, our artists, our nominees, and so on. And uh, and then I, what we have done before, Andy and I have, have done site visits, and then had uh, you know uh, the destination management office take us uh, to some of those other properties, and then we get the word out through our marketing strategy to the membership. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Mancini. And, and just a, a reminder to everybody, if you are interested in asking a question, making a comment, whatever, uh, please enter that in the Zoom chat. Go ahead, uh, Tony. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, you know, I started out, we, we talk, we talk, yeah, I started out about how hard it's been on musicians. And, uh, you know, the stories I heard throughout the pandemic, musicians, well-known musicians, selling their gear. I mean, to sell their gear. I mean, I, 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 you know, and well-known artists. And I heard that story over and over again. And so it, it's just, uh, you know, and, and again, the hotels, the bars, the restaurants and so on. It's been so hard. And so uh, after uh, Fredericton is done this year, um, you know, are there events leading up to it or even small events to get the momentum going? Uh, and so it does two things. And it generates that, that interest and, uh, uh, you know, uh, interest for tickets and involvement, but you know, an opportunity for our many artists that uh, just need a gig, uh, you know, are the things like that in, in, in even smaller venues uh, throughout the municipality. I uh, wouldn't have anything planned just like that right now, but it's a great, a great idea. Um, I know that uh, Fredericton is certainly encouraging all uh, venues, restaurants to, to actually hire and book uh, musicians that are not ECMA artists, obviously not everybody that's coming. Right. So the ECMA can, can play. So I think that's a, a really great idea. I think they're providing actually, um, you know, some, some funding to be able to pay those artists. But, you know, we, we start the whole uh, outreach in the, in the fall and we do the submission process and, and we're, we're pushing all of that for ECMA. We'll do various kind of um, promotional aspects to get people going. Uh, right now, it's, uh, it's a blank slate. So we look forward to discussing all of these ideas with our local engagement committee that will be put in place after Frederick Turn is done. And, um, and I think, uh, yeah, this, we, we'll get started as soon as we possibly can to generate that interest and remind people just how great music is to be everywhere. Will somebody be supervising the mayor when he's in Fredericton to take over with you? Because that's, uh, he does that's need a great job, actually, I believe. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's a right. big job. Uh, I, she, she knows. She knows that's a big job. So, uh, <laughs> Done it before. <laughs> uh, just on Mark's point, but Roger Square, I, I didn't answer that part. So, Mark, um, you know, with Rogers being on as a major sponsor, they got very excited about that uh, that property, and uh, they are the sponsor of the red carpet and the award show this year, and they they're hoping to extend that. But I, I think that it's going to be a, a, an area that will be wonderful for the general public as well to be engaged. We always try to have a, a free event so that, uh, you know, that, that everybody, that it's, ECMAs are accessible to, to all walks of life. And, and I see that maybe that's the kickoff to the red carpet or it might be like a tailgate party sort of thing afterwards. And, uh, 
and maybe having the show on the uh, on the digital screens there. But our marketing um, manager is already very excited and, and kind of brainstorming with the team on how we can make that a, a very cool event. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you. Okay, super. Thank you very much, uh, everybody. Uh, and thank you, Andre and Andy, for uh, joining us this afternoon with uh, with your presentation and providing the information. Um, it looks phenomenal. I, I wish you the very best this year and uh, and especially when you come to Halifax next year. It's going to be really fun and so great to see everybody. Thank you so Absolutely. much. We can't, we can't wait. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And Alison uh, pointed out that the there may be an opportunity to connect with uh, the NAG games in uh, 2023 as well. That would be uh, an idea. interesting connection. I, I yeah. think so. Yeah. Great idea. Yep. Uh, the, so back to the agenda, the next items are information items brought forward is none. Uh, and then there is the special events advisory committee, 2022 proposed meeting schedule. Uh, this has been circulated. There was one amendment that I don't know, if, uh, Jill, would you be able to speak to this? I think there was an updated version to it. Sure, there was an updated version of the report that went out uh, on Friday. It simply was a um, uh, typo. Instead of 2022 after each of the dates, it had was presented as 2021, so that was corrected. So. Um, if you have any additional questions about dates, uh, I'm certainly ready to uh, answer them. It, uh, FCM dates were not in that list that was handed out. So is, it, is there any conflict with FCM next year? Which is what June usually is there. Jill, are you, are you aware of any conflict with uh, FCM dates? I'm. I'm I'm not, not sure. aware of any conflict, but I certainly can check into it. And um, if there is any conflict, I will work to resolve that and bring it back to your next meeting as a amendment to the schedule. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Since nobody else has spoken to it, I'm going to. Um, there is one conflict that I pointed out to, uh, or that I noticed earlier, and that is the December 14th meeting. Uh, given the time of that meeting, it conflicts with the Audit and Finance Standing Committee in 2022, um, because Audit and Finance normally happens uh, in the third week of the month, so that would be December 31st, too close to Christmas, so it was pushed back to the 14th. So I'm not sure if we would entertain a different day or a different time, um, but I'm wondering if we would entertain a different something. There is also no motion on the floor yet, so there is nothing to amend. So would somebody please put the motion on the floor respecting, uh, respecting the schedule for 2022? Well, Gordon did such a good job before he practiced it, so he wants to do it again. I think it's in the chat there, Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, that the Special Events Advisory Committee approved the 2022 meeting schedule as presented. Thank you very much, Gordon. Do we have like a seconder for that? Gordon, that was awesome. Yeah. Do we have a seconder for it? Thank you, Second. Councillor Morse, for seconding that. So we do, have, we do have the conflict on uh, December 14th. We can uh, proceed as is and, and resolve that conflict later. Um, if, uh, if that's okay. Okay. All in favor of, uh, the motion then, uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed aye. say nay. Great. Thank you. That motion passes. There are no added items. Um, we now have a date of the next meeting, uh, with that passing, uh, the date of the next meeting is August 13th, 2022. And so with that, can I please have a motion to adjourn? Uh, excuse me. Oh, go uh, ahead, Elizabeth. The, the next meeting is April 19th, 2022 with the funding report. We have the next meeting on this schedule is April 13th. 
sorry, it may, I may I think you, I was just caught off guard when you said August. So I wanted to uh, clarify that. Sherry, can you, is it April 13th and 19th? Yes, it would be Tuesday, April 13th. It's April 13th. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Apologies, I, yes, I, April 13th. That's good. Okay, so that would be Wednesday, April 13th. Yes, Wednesday, <laughs> April 13th. Super. <laughs> hey, hey, are we at morning time, Mr. Chair? Or are we back to like a? We used to meet at nine o'clock. So the schedule, uh, the schedule indicates that uh, they begin at nine thirty, nine thirty in the morning. I didn't catch that. Okay, we used to begin at nine o'clock, and I, I didn't catch that it uh, had been changed to nine thirty. Yeah, we had some discussion about that, uh, giving people time to travel. So then, this will be in person, I suspect. Probably. These are all. Um, these are all after the restrictions are lifted and the uh, emergency measures have been dropped. So the likelihood of it being in person is pretty high. Okay. Okay. And one final question has come into the chat and this is for Jill, uh, I think, and that is, uh, are we okay to share the presentation about the ECMAs with our counterparts? I expect the answer is yes, because it has already been made in public in this meeting. Yeah, so it will, if I could just add to that, uh, Mr. Chair, we will have the presentation will be put on the Halifax.ca on the agenda webpage um, in the next little while. So it'll be viewable to, to the general public. So absolutely feel free to uh, share it among, uh, among your counterparts, colleagues, friends, neighbors, everybody. Um, thank you. If there is nothing else, can we go back to uh, a motion to adjourn, please? So move. Thank you, Councillor Mancini. We stand adjourned. Uh, have a great day, everybody. We will see you next month.